and then we were just like cool chill like we'll set up this 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 dashboard to see how many orders come in and hopefully you know we get a thousand or something like that and i remember <laughs> i remember we watched this graph go up and it was like a thousand every hour <laughs> for 17 hours so, can so you we had 17,000 orders <laughs> Hi guys, Hello. I'm Mabel. I'm Pete. <laughs> and it's raining. Yeah, it's raining. It's been raining heavily. In case you don't know, I hit up marketing for Teleport. And we're here today. I think this is post our actual fourth birthday, which actually would have happened on the 13th yeah. of March. Yeah. So where was the party at, Mabel, that I wasn't invited to for this fourth birthday? Actually, when is our fourth I birthday? I should be asking you. So our fourth birthday, 13th, la, 13th is it 13th? March. I think it is 13th. Is it? March. Okay, so it's based on, I guess, when in, when the company was incorporated, la, which was in Malaysia. As Red Cargo Logistics, Sindirin Bahad. So that's when it first started. Who, who came up with the name? Uh, not me. And we clearly didn't have any marketing people. Mm -hmm. That's why it was called Red Cargo Logistics in there in Bahad. Mm -hmm. The name was already kind of handed to me. I remember we, I, I kind of came back to Malaysia in February. And um, the basic idea was like, surely we could make a delivery business. Out of this. Like we must, be the, we must be the best delivery company that just doesn't exist today because, you know, I, I remember you need to get a document signed so I'd pass it to someone who gave it to the cabin crew, gave it to the other side, and then the ground staff ran up and then delivered it to someone else who then eventually made it to the office. So that's how the idea started. The original name is Red Cargo, right? Yeah. What, what, how did Teleport, the name Teleport come about? Yeah, so that actually came like almost a year later, to be honest. There's had a few versions of this company. So I was just trying to think back and think about like great milestones that were kind of involved, right? So it was Red Cargo because there was no other name. So we just like, okay, we kept it as Red Cargo. Mm. I just remember asking the guys, and I think some of them will remember, like maybe like the Jays and others who were helpful to start the company. I was like, can we have a logo that just kind of looks cool? So I remember we like designed a really crude one, like a circle with red and then the, the you know, the not what's now famous as the teleport notch mm -hmm. was like our first logo. Like we had that little notch, it was kind of the ULD and that was our first logo, it was just red and then, you know. Who designed it? I believe it was, like we had a freelancer right, right. design it. And then we just used it because we didn't have anything else and we needed a logo for the letterhead and for the name cards and stuff like that. A lot of people don't remember the first year because it was just a blur of just stuff we needed to do. Like we needed to get the airlines to kind of support us. We needed to get them to give us their belly space. We needed to go around not just Malaysia but like every other country to kind of get them to, to join and cooperate. How difficult was that actually? That was really hard because I remember and it's funny we talk about this kind of March 2018 when we started so like our fourth birthday now right in April I remember there was like this audit committee that they said look if you're ever gonna get the airlines let's say starting in Malaysia to like give you your belly space you need to go to their audit committee and it's like a listed company and we have to like go through all this process and we just like incorporate the company like maybe like two weeks before the audit committee and you need to go there and you need to pitch to them and you need to get their approval otherwise the next audit committee is three months from now so I remember I said forget it I'll just crash the audit committee I'll just turn up you know in other wow. matters and so I, I remember I was like telling some of our early staff I remember like it was like Jay and I think even Joanne mm -hmm. helped with the paper and so we put together a paper quickly like we really need you to kind of say okay in principle you don't have to say okay to the details but are you okay in principle for us to like pursue this I remember coming in and they were the chairman was extremely upset like he was like upset like there's no risk you're not showing us any respect how are we gonna read this document and so I just kind of like tried to keep cool and explain like look I really want to start this business so that you know we can get it off the ground quickly otherwise you guys are not gonna meet again for a while three months so after a lot of debate and then he accepted the paper in the end to be to be fair to Dato Pada he accepted the paper so in May we started business so it was wow. like April was the audit committee May was like the first kind of month that we did any business, but March is when we incorporated. So that's kind of how the whole thing started. So how did the name Teleport itself? Yeah, so teleport, teleport, it was again a crazy story because we had done business by that point for one year. So I was kicking around thinking about different names. So there were two names that I came up with. Mm. One was A to B. 
So A to B, like literally. A to B, and literally that was made its way also into like yeah, teleports yeah. kind of thing, right? With A to B magically. And the second one was like teleport because I thought that idea of like fast and instantaneous was pretty cool. And the name teleport was kind of like, it wasn't taken, no one really had used it, and certainly not for logistics. You know, it had the port in there. So that was kind of like the airport mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. And then it had all this other stuff. So I was like, that's a cool idea, but I needed to get it signed off, right? As, as most kind of branding decisions and changes of stuff. So it was May, I think May, 2019. I had a half hour session to kind of pitch it. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have a creative director. I didn't have marketing. We had no marketing people, yeah. whatever. So it was just us. And we, what we did was I got a couple people that I knew and these were, you know, they, they, they run a, a clothing company, right? Called um, PNM. Motel. Yeah, so I got them to do us a couple mock-ups because I didn't have you know any creative team or whatever So I was like hey dudes, we'll buy some merchandise off you But can you like design our first logo and our first kind of like our first lookbook and our brand book and stuff And so they did that to be fair So I remember that we get we came they came down I pitched them this idea of like logistics is cool and you know Can you use your your design sensibility to give us like a logo and so that's what we got and I took it to pitch it and in this 30 minute meeting with Tony I was at his desk in Red Q I remember we were talking about other stuff but we, I was also trying to slip in like I want to change the brand I really want to unify like this vision that you know I have and at first I had to like endure him like talking to Joanne and Shash who, who were there mm -hmm. about like tech mm -hmm. and how the business work and how the tech worked and stuff because we had built some tech by then as well and then he was, as usual, like scattered. We were like bouncing ideas. So he wanted to play chess when he found out that Shosh was like a professional chess player. And I say professional because I don't really know if he is professional, but he was certainly better than all of us. So we, so Tony had a chess board, so he brought it out and we played. And we played chess and we said, if, if Shosh wins, he gets 10,000 ringgit. That was like the, the big thing. So Tony was like really excited. He was in a good mood. Cause I was like teeing him up mm -hmm. for this brand change. Cause I thought he wouldn't be mm -hmm. supportive of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I thought like we'd have to argue about whether it made sense or whatever. Right. Um, cause it was a whole different look. It was black and white. We'll talk yeah, about why that, it was black yeah, and white. We'll, we'll, we'll it was a whole that. thing. Right. And so, so we had to, I had to get him playing chess for us with Shosh and he lost. Mm. So then we all celebrated. I think it was on Instagram live at one point. Like we all celebrated like Shosh 10,000 ring it richer. But I think Tony was like, no, I'd, you know, let's play again. <laughs> and he said, let's play speed chess this time. Cause I remember the first round he got beat in like 40 seconds. So we're like, if Shosh can beat you again, we'll do double or nothing. Mm. But if he doesn't beat you in 60 seconds, you have to survive six seconds, then okay, then it's even. So Shosh didn't beat him on the second round. So he really hung on for 60 seconds in speed chess for the second round. But then after that point, I said, I just teed up the conversation with Tony. I was like, hey, Tony, I'm thinking about, you know, building this brand, teleport and having it be end to end and be technology enabled and, you know, black and white and deliver really fast and be really cool as a brand. And here, here's what it kind of looks like. He's like, he looked at me, he's like, wow, this is awesome. And that was it. Really? He said, that was it. He was like, this is awesome. Great meeting. That's why I remember he said that. This is awesome. Great meeting. We took a picture. I remember we took a picture. I, I think I have it somewhere still where it was like me, Joanne, Shosh, and him with the chessboard. And then me kind of getting his okay to, to kind of build this brand. And that was it. But why black? Well, black because I thought, you know, logistics is really hard to understand. And it wasn't, it's not very cool. And it's not very transparent. If you ever try to kind of send something, you'll always have to do with like package size, do with different price. If you're a business customer, you'll always have to do with different contracts. We're just as simple and transparent like black and white. And that was the basic idea of how it ended up being black and white. And then so it was teleport with the notch, with the A to B magically initially, and then black and white. So I got all that kind of done. So what, what actually, what narrative are you trying to create? Yeah, Basically. yeah. I mean, I think it's all in the brand, right? I mean, I think if we can deliver what we believe the brand represents, which is we're really fast, yep. and it's something that most people just can't deliver at that speed. So that that whole teleport it idea, like teleport it means like snap A to B, and that was the kind of everything that we've been trying to do was always around that idea. And then the second thing I think was the black and white concept, right? That it was just it's easy to work with us, like it's. We're black and white, like you come into our customer care chats and we don't give you really long technical explanations for why we can't deliver what we deliver. It's just, 
you know, we're, we're approachable, we're accessible, and it's easy to deal with us. It's easy to understand. You're not going to have hidden, you know, prices and costs and stuff like that. It's just, it's everything that you see is what you get. Considering, I mean, you had such a clear vision yeah. for the brand yeah. right at the beginning yeah. with the name, yeah. which represented, you know, which represents yeah. speed. Yeah. The color, yeah. uh, which represents ease of use, you know, yeah. the whole black and white thing. Yeah. How far are we, do you think, from that aspiration or that ambition, or how near are we to it? Yeah, it's a great question. It's a tough one, too, to be honest, because some days I feel like we're really close, mm. and some days I feel like we're going off track, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's just the joy and pain of, of trying to build something meaningful and build something even though you know there's lots of odds against us of doing it right so i guess to answer your question you know some days it feels really close some days it feels really far but what i think really helped was to see that other people you know bought into it and could extend on it right so i'm the only only really the originator of like the idea and mm -hmm. the aspiration and the maybe the vision right and i had those three things clear in my own brain but it really didn't mean anything until like you know Maybe like you could incorporate that in turning that into a, a, a brand campaign that yeah. was clear for you that you didn't really need my direction for it. You it was just like you you could see where we were trying to go and you could translate that into something practical like what you needed to do. It was clear when people wear T-shirts and they they feel connected to the idea that this is more than just a service, right? This was like you know there's something about being neat and looking good and being you know kind of a community in some way like if, if people can extend the brand to how they kind of operate day to day or work and or how to kind of build a great campaign around it then i feel like that's when it was becoming closer to reality when people could could take the idea and it meant something in their day to day is that a funny teleport story like either behind the desk or during a delivery service or yeah i mean there, there was a couple funny ones but i you know then I'm trying to think now. Like the memorable one was delivering the, the Najib's house. Like mm. That was a really memorable one. I wasn't particularly funny. I was a partic I was terrified for our driver. Why? Because uh, it was kind of him. I remember him. This little proton, mm. and he was driving. And it was like it turned. I wasn't sure whether it was a fake order or, you know, it was legit. But we had to deliver it. And we like looked up his address, and we all got excited that it was Najib's house for real. And then we all were like. Hey, is he gonna be okay? Like, how does how does he ring the bell? Because the person who ordered it was Najib. It wasn't just like his his. So like, it legitimately came. I swear to God, the it's app. It yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, so it wasn't like Tony it wasn't, who no, called to say deliver no, something to Najib. I swear to God, it was. It said Najib Raza ordered Roja in Damansar Heights. In Damansar Heights, ordered Roja. Okay. And so <laughs> I was like excited but a little worried for the guy because i didn't know what the protocol was mm -hmm. so that was really really cool we were all like huddle over the thing and like we were tracking his because we didn't have drag and trace at the time so we were like calling him every five minutes like where are you hey make sure you deliver this on time it's not jib then he sent us a picture from his windscreen like of him in front of the house and then he just rung the bell and then what happened and then the help the the one of the servants or the helpers came and took the rojak and then that was it last so it was a bit oh, of an anti-climax okay. but i thought it was gonna be a really exciting moment and everything would be great but yeah because it was najib who ordered it himself i've got one more which i think in, i don't know if it involved you at the time but it's still on our board i don't know if you know this in in wisma tune like we have a board that is a blackboard not a whiteboard but it's like mm -hmm. a blackboard where we have some number like seventeen thousand four hundred. this is before me this is Talking before you the, right what is it nine nine seven seven eleven which one is it i think it was like I think it was 7.7. Seven. Mm, seven, seven. So this was like our first time trying to run an e-commerce platform because we thought e-commerce could give us the volume to give us the deliveries, right? So we didn't really know what we were doing. So we had this, we knew that we needed to do a promo mm. to kind of drive, drive deliveries to the platform. We just said, okay, we're going to do a 70% promo because it's 7.7. Seven. Mm. But we didn't really think through the mechanics properly. So we, I think the delivery was like either free or 70 cents or... Yeah. Something on top of the 70 yeah. 70 percent off, right? Yeah. And then we didn't set up a cap. Yes, I heard about this. <laughs> we didn't set a login either, meaning like you could yeah just anyway, log in from yeah. anywhere and like you know order as much as you wanted, yeah. right? We were really excited. We're like, this is the coming out party. Like this is, you know, the first time we're gonna run this massive e-commerce promo, and it's gonna be great. This is for our shop, right? And this was for our shop at the yeah. time. And yeah, so we ran this promo. And we're like, we, we, I think we did it with a week's notice and usual uh, last minute and then we were just like 
cool, chill. Like we'll set up this 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 dashboard to see how many orders come in, and hopefully, you know, we get a thousand or something like that. And I remember, <laughs> I remember we watched this graph go up, and it was like a thousand every hour <laughs> for seventeen hours. So, so we had seventeen thousand orders. <laughs> With like people like getting 70% off no cap and there was like no login <laughs> So we were like Actually, this story is infamous because when I came in I heard about it when I came in It's a famous story because yeah. you'll see pictures of us and we didn't have a warehouse nothing right so yeah. Not only were we just like selling like I don't know Chocolates and perfume we were selling fresh Hi vegetables Yeah yeah Yogurt <laughs> uh, Meat so it was just all this fresh product and like they were coming from all like Batu Caves, I don't know, Rawang, all these places and we were having to pick up from all these merchants. So the merchants were like really happy because mm. you know obviously we were funding the discounts. But we were like man 17,000 orders, like how many orders is that? Because we didn't really have any dimension. I'm like what? Not that bad one. So we, I remember we sat down with team like it would be okay like we just we just have to just deliver right? And so I remember we <laughs> we went out there and planned it. We're like, I think we can deliver this in two weeks. <laughs> deliver but the yogurt in two deliver weeks. Deliver everything in two weeks. But then we're, but some of the team were like, hey man, 6,000 orders are like perishable. You got yogurt yeah. and fresh veg. And we didn't have a fridge or anything. So, mm. so that was a nightmare. That was crazy, but it was so memorable. Cause, and I still wrote it on the whiteboard. Cause we, we, we literally had to go and I, I got like my God kids. Mm. to like drive for us like I recruited everybody I could find to come into the office I remember on a Saturday and we, we were bringing all these 17,000 parcels to sort <laughs> and to kind of deliver and we were putting the meat in the current fridge that we have in Wismatoon <laughs> and we had with the yogurt and then we had my, my wife delivered some I remember it was so crazy because it was just so ridiculously planned but that was like our coming coming out party like the like last mile delivery and the funniest part was when we did all that right after two weeks and I remember it was like Sabrina was super stressed Joanne was stressed we had all these people coming on the weekend and we were like trying to deliver and I remember that maybe the most we delivered was like 2,000 a day so it really was like two weeks worth of work and we used to do deliveries like somebody who was like next door neighbors with the merchant had like ordered a thousand orders. Mm. So we were like consolidating for that person. And the guy was like next door to the merchant. And we realized that it maybe was the merchant's friend who was ordering at 70% off, to which we had to pay full price <laughs> to the merchant. And it was like his friend who had ordered. But the Crazy. worst part was the worst, the kicker to why it was so funny, but so, 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 so sad at the same time was when we analyzed how many new customers had ordered those 17,000 orders, right? We're like, wow, this is a great campaign. We might have you know, attracted maybe 10,000, you know, kind of new customers to this, our shop platform. We're off to a good start, right? It was a thousand customers. <laughs> so on average, we had like one guy ordering like, 94 times yeah and on average one customer had ordered 17 times yeah so all of that after all that two weeks of pain we had attracted a thousand customers <laughs> so that was the the kicker at the end of it so that was funny to me i mean it was painful and funny okay so we've got questions from our colleagues okay uh all over cool so the first one is from india okay. and it's from shiv our okay. sales manager there okay so Hi, the shiv. question is do you really miss otis climate and pure breathiness huh is this okay i don't understand this <laughs> is oti a, a place or tty oh uti that's where i went to uh oh, that's when i went to boarding school sorry oh okay so the question is do you miss Uti's climate and I guess fresh air is what yeah, he's so trying it was, to ask. So, so I live in a, it was on a hill station so it right. take, took 10 hours to get there by bus. And yeah I do How miss it. How did you end up there? Because my parents were just like hey you gotta go and you know uh, get out of the house and be, be humble okay. and so but get a good education. So they're like okay I remember that one time when we drove through India and we saw kids studying under street lamps. That was mm. what my dad told me. Mm. So he said, surely that's a great country for you to get educated mm. because people value, you know, kind of education so much that they would read books under some lamps at night. So he said, you're going to India. And I said, doesn't sound like I have a choice. So I ended up in Uti, which is this hill station that took two flights to get there and 10 hours wow. in total, including a bus ride. So it's basically a really nice hill station, so it's like kind of like colonial, and the weather is just good all year round. 
so yeah answer is I miss it um, to be honest I'd, I'd love to go back maybe if we can deliver something there I could go back that'd be nice yeah we've got one from Thailand from Wipawi, I, I apologize for not pronouncing your name properly if I'm She's clearly from Thailand, yeah. Yeah, Wipawi. Um, as a, oh, she's um, our customer success senior executive okay. in Thailand. Okay, hi there. So the question is, as a CEO, which yeah. book do you recommend employees to read? <laughs> Pete is How all about. Have? Pete is all about. How long do we have? The book, the long read. How long do we have? Uh, pick one only. Okay, pick one, 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 one. If you have to choose one. Well, okay, the book that helped me the most, to be honest, because no one's really, you know, born to be a CEO or born to lead mm -hmm. at all. Is there's a book called The Hard Thing About Hard Things, mm -hmm. which I think we can maybe put a link to at some point to, to kind of people they're interested. Which is just kind of like a really practical guide as to like how not to screw up as a CEO so to me I just read it and it was just it, you know it wasn't like theory it was just kind of like look you're gonna screw up a thousand ways and here are a few tips as to how to screw up less and so when I read that it was just it just hit home that it's not about minimizing the amount of screw ups I'm gonna make yeah. it's just about kind of learning from them and and still being able to lead people even if you're not you know perfect like you're not gonna be perfect and you're gonna make a lot of mistakes so that's the book I would recommend because I think it speaks for everything like whether you run a company or you know you run a small business or you run a department or you run customer success there's something in there for everyone so I would say that book I highly recommend um, but thanks for the question yeah I have loads of books okay so we've got a we've got a DNM type of question from Ramki okay our okay. delivery ops manager in Singapore so okay. the question is tell us one I'm trying to drive ask and yeah. the question at the same time. really well <laughs> Really well. Tell us one quote or, or one thing you've learned in your personal life that you feel have stuck with you, uh, and it's something that you, something that helped bring you to where you are today. Great question. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's I, I have it on my WhatsApp. I don't know if people even bother to look at it, but it's on my WhatsApp because I try to remind myself that mm. it, the quote is basically serving others. Service to others is the rent you pay yeah, yeah, for your I've, place I've for your place you know on earth which is kind of to me was like that's like my job description that's the the, the, the you know the, the kind of if you have to write out what a CEO what a leader should be it should be in service of others so yeah. I live by that I try to remind myself it's not easy always to, to yeah. think about the bigger and the greater good all the time but hey it's a deep and meaningful question but that would be mine um, I think another one that comes to mind is it's 1% inspiration 99% perspiration right mm. like it's you know it's vision without execution is hallucination. It's, it's literally those kind of ideas that like, everyone's got great ideas. I mean, everyone has great ideas. And I think the only difference between that and actually getting something and, you know, kind of ha happening or, or making a mark somewhere in the world is really the ability to kind of turn that into, into progress and into actually doing something. So I really think it's those two things that I believe in. Um, and hopefully is, is something that I can always stand for. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Ramki, for a very deep question. Yeah. It's raining. It's very. The mood is right. Yeah, I think the mood is right for it. The next <laughs> one. The next one is from Indonesia. Yeah. From Leo Franz Gunawan, our okay. sales leader. Hi, Leo. Right? I'm gonna go with question number two from. Leo. Okay. Okay. Hi, the Leo. Question is, what keeps you up late? Okay. Because of teleport. What is it about? Is there anything about teleport that keeps you up? Yeah, night? yeah. I, I always tell people it's not being able to make payroll. Mm. It's as simple as that. Like, you know, you know, we can spend a lot of money, invest, build a lot of things, but if I can't make payroll, that's just the stuff of nightmares for me. The most basic level of trust is at the end of the month, you're gonna be paid for what you do, right? And I think if I ever break that promise, I honestly have told people I'll, I'd be happy to step down because I would have failed. Yeah. Um, so that's the stuff that keeps me awake at night where it's like, how do we not overextend what we do? Like, how do we not push this too far because at the end of the month, we're going to make payroll. Yeah. So it's as simple as that. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. The next question is from the Philippines, from Pee Wee Fragile Bamoy, who's a control tower Just to be clear, executive. that is a real name. That is a real name. Hi, Pee Wee. Hi, Pee Wee. And the question is, how do you see the Philippine delivery operations five years from now? Oh, I think actually, if you think about people that um, would use teleport services the most would most naturally would be Filipinos mm. because 
what are they famous for? Balik Bayan boxes, right? Sending stuff home, like overseas foreign workers sending stuff home uh, to their families in a, you know, at Christmas or in a special occasion. So, you know, I honestly hope in five years from now, Filipinos all across the world can send something with teleport home to their families. So that would be my big wish mm. if I could, Pee Wee. Is, Pee Wee, is your, is your middle name definitely Fragile? Fragile, Because that's man. just so on brand, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks for the question. The next one is from China, from Xiaoming Chen, okay, our okay. Air Ops supervisor. Okay. Um, That's Eric. I think his name is Eric. Oh, is it? Yeah, Eric. Okay. Yeah. He joined. He's one of the first people that joined us in China. Hi, Eric. So the question is, which city do you want to go to if you could, if you travel to China? Have you been to China? Actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few times. Okay. Of all the kind of places you visited in China, yeah. yeah. Uh, which one's your I, I always remember um, Joanne told me Shenzhen is the most modern city mm. I would ever be able to visit. Mm. I remember Joanne used to tell me that um, if you go somewhere, go to Shenzhen because it's just like, it's kind of like fast forwarding into the future. So I've never been to Shenzhen. I've been to Guangzhou. I've been to Hong Kong. Obviously, I've been to I've kind of that been area. To China, by the way. You've never been to China ever? So my favorite no. city in China is Shanghai. Because it's just really cosmopolitan. It's really, it's really cool. Like you can just kind of see East meets West. But in terms of like just remembering what Joanne told me about, if you want to go into the future, yeah, like go and visit Shenzhen. I think that would be the first city I want to go to if we could travel again to China. Yeah. So Shenzhen. We have to go all around once yeah. we travel yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just cool. Like visit I mean, Celia and the team in yeah. China. Yeah. So final question. Yeah. Pete? From which country? From, from Eula. From the country of Mabel. <laughs> That's a very big <laughs> independent country. Yeah. Yes. Very independent. You need a visa to visit? Yes. Are you proud of where Teleport is today? Wow, that's a great question, Mabel. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, that wasn't prepared at all. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm really proud. I'm really, really, really proud. I mean, I, you know, you're always proud when you, it, it's gone further than you could imagine. You know what I mean? Like, okay, like, you know, we thought Teleport could do super fast delivery, deliver anywhere and so on. But to see how we've done it and see how far we've come and the people that have come along and, and are along for the journey is far exceeding kind of what I ever thought it could be possible, right? I never really could imagine it. So to me, super proud. I, I'm proud that, you know, we're sitting in a car here talking about, you know, all the things we've done for the last three and a half years. Like it doesn't feel particularly real until we get to talk about it sometimes and just remember so yeah i'm really really proud i'm proud of where we're going to be honest i'm proud of uh you know four five six seven eight let's see where we go from here yeah man and yeah. i'm excited and yeah i'm really excited excited about yeah where we're gonna be heading yeah. to. i think this year is a big year though yeah right this is, this is a definitely. big year